it is finally time for what's pretty much the main goal of the Apollo Applications Program, Apollo Mars, sending men to the red planet and returning them home safely. Here, we see another Saturn V, which, like the last one, used for Apollo Eve, link in the description, by the way, uh, has been modified for this long duration flight. So without further ado, let's get in the air. It's those five J2, I believe, or KE1 in this timeline, rather. Engines are still enough to bring this massive Titan into space. Generally, I think uh, Apollo Mars was probably for lack of a better word, the poster child of the Apollo Applications Program. Because it's well known that humanity, since our ancient days, has sort of had this weird fascination with our closest planetary neighbor that's just like, that's nearly like us. And had Congress not been an asshole, hypothetically, we could have had this mission in our timeline, but, you know, can't win them all. Now, honestly, I didn't find much on what rock the rocket for this mission would have been like. So I generally kind of just went with a, a long-range equivalent of the Saturn V that can go beyond lunar operations. And, you know, it's not a true recreation, or recreation, rather. But, you know, it's it's something. Still get that... Still, it still passes the aesthetic vibe check. So, yeah, you still got big stage cut to the atmosphere. You got the transfer stage, landers in there. You'll see that later, and then the way the actual ship. Granted, the TWR as you rose wasn't that great, but you know. Just really do be like that sometimes. Yep, just making sure that's the right engine connected. I don't know why this one makes this turn at four meters of delta B, but it's neither here nor there. Everyone seems pretty confident on their mission. We probably have the best and brightest three person crew heading into expanses unknown. And some of these solar panels are just like pretty much immortal when they're closed, so there's that. And let's try to save the transfer stage as much as we can. Let's go to about 80,000 meters for Apogee. Pretty good orbit, I'd say, or suborbital rather. And there we go. There it is there it is. That just you know, kind of because we don't need this anymore. So when we get into space or orbit, rather. What is that? Oh, that's all the... You can see the modified lander based off... Yep, that's their one. Based off the eagle design of the original Apollo program. And lights on. Space has been achieved. There we go. Bye bye, fairings. Wait, do we pass the. Oh, wait, we. Yeah.
just kind of say the maneuver maker in this game is the most accurate, but you know, yeehaw and all that or some. I, I'll, I'll just cut to when they go to Mars. All right, we are now on course. Mars or bust within. What is it? 80 days. Talk about around the world in 80 days. More like around the worlds in 80 days. Yeah, that was that was bad. Wow. Just a little screenshot. As repair for what I don't think would be a maneuver. But you know, it's something I like to do to keep keep space clean at when I can. But to ditch our transfer stage, we're gonna throw it onto Mars's surface. Three, one. So it'll just impact and be destroyed. There we go. Now we can undock. And pair for. Collecting our lander, as you would with any other Saturn V. I swear to god, this better- oh. This better work. Because this is one of the most important parts of the mission. And the magnet should be kicking in any minute now. Perfect. Now, <laughs> I saw an ant on my monitor and I thought it was a, uh, thought it was a piece of stage. Where's the, this one, yeah. Let's just, there we go. Oh boy, we'll need to fix that. But, you know, that can be just another little maneuver. To get closer. Where is the proper engine? There we go. So now this stage is effectively dead to the program. But I believe it might fail horribly in the whole crashing into Mars and being deorbited. So let's take a look at that. Yep, it's just gonna fly by harmlessly. Oh well. Just like that one stage from the real uh, mission. So I will see you all on Mars. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mars. We're just finishing up our orbital insertion now. And this will, this thing right here will actually play important later. As that was a contingency that was built in the mission. So now the most, one of the most tedious and arduous parts 
is over. We have a crew of three in orbit of the red planets. Let's just have... Because I know the pilot's not going to get really a chance to go outside of the ship. So we'll have them inspect, you know, see how... See how our craft is looking. I hate how the escape F2 thing changes your camera. Oh god. Get, get your shit together, Valentina. But yeah. So I feel like this would probably be part of the mission. Just, you know, inspect it, see how things... How the systems have held up. Uh, from the time since launch. You know, maybe see if we can get a little... We can mess with the crew a little bit, being outside. Outside the window. Let me just... Come on, down the end of the state. Stay still. Go up, don't go up. No. Just imagine you just look out. Okay, never mind, that joke fell flat. Regardless, once the visual inspection of the systems is complete, our pilot will return, and we can prepare a crew transfer to the lander. So everyone in their blue uniform get on to the lander. And Valentina, say goodbye to your crewmates as there's no telling how long they will be down on the surface for. Let's get that signals relay back up. Why is the shield not able to close? It's weird. Oh well. So I'm thinking because we want to avoid going to a place where we've been before, as you can see, there's rovers and stuff that have charted the world before. We'll wait. Do almost a full orbit so we can descend on the day side of the planet. Yep. Not gonna lie, we went a little too far, but you know. Really do be like that. Now. The descent. The most terrifying part of any Apollo mission. Descending towards an alien world. Looks like we've hit at we're starting to hit atmosphere. Alright, let's uh, crossfade to landing. Uh oh. Oh, what is this?
Y'all are in so much trouble for that one. By far the worst and best for Apollo program landing. Oh my god. Y'all didn't get that good of a view either. You got a boulder in your view. Great job. At least extend your antenna. And your ladder. Oh my god. I... I just need a minute. Because wow, that was... That was a hell of a landing, you two. <laughs> right then. Just like on the moon, America now has the first man on Mars. Except this time, we got better spacesuits. Just kind of like, you know, wonder, I guarantee you this rock is one of the fake ones. Yep. Oh well. Regardless, let's plant that beautiful, beautiful flag to claim our victory. Well, let's just get a picture with both of these brave, brave Kerbals. Our brave heroes to explore the void. Come on, turn around. There we go. Say cheese. And snap cut to finishing science deployment. Alright, with this last experiment deployed, all of our surface samples have been taken. All of our stuff has been done. Now, I'll just say that, you know, they're probably doing something in there right now, I guess. Meanwhile, up above, as research continues on the surface, up above, the actual mothership has a different goal before experiments start. To reconnect with the Apollo's... the Apollo Mars refueling buoy, which was sent two years ahead at the last transfer window. Basically, it was sort of a storage tank to top off whatever fuel was, was needed. And then... Obviously, these retro rockets should have the orbit itself. So let's just plug this one in. And there we go. Obviously, it did not have very much fuel, honestly. Because... Well, it had to fly itself here, essentially. So... We just gotta refuel- we will take what we can at this point. Because getting our crew back is the highest priority that NASA has. After their surface mission was complete, it then became time to shed all the extra weight they could Oh, actually, it's probably not that much weight, but as they prepare to ascend Because unlike the Saturn landers for the moon,
this one would not separate immediately from its from its landing stage. Rather, the landing stage would be used, at least from what I would see, or what I can do here, the landing stage would be an essential part of escaping the alien atmosphere. Because, let's face it, this little flying saucer lander port, port, part, it simply does not have the needed delta V in this design to get to orbit itself. As much as I wanted to leave a pretty little historical site behind on Mars or Duna, looks like my own lack of foresight and, del and delta V calculations made that impossible. It's a real shame. But, at least now I get to see this thing fly as I try to fight uh, Time Warp. We still got the best seat in the house. Getting to watch those red rocks roll by is like something that you never get to see. And these guys will probably never get to see it again. At least, any real Apollo astronaut. Goodbye, landing stage. You will be missed, you beautiful historical relic. Quite frankly, I have no idea what I was talking about, but, you know, let's just go with it. Something, something, best seat in the house. What a view. Also, I seriously wonder what these two buttons do. Like, if I just started slapping these buttons and switches, what's the worst that could happen? And now we go for orbit. Probably the ultimate nail biter moment of the mission. Or, not really. Apparently. Well. I guess let's, uh, crossfade to our intercept. After a long, tense period of silence from the lander, a message arrives. We have radar contact. We are good to go. Now, it was just a matter of can the two ships can reconnect so we can get our crew back and we can safely go home. Because they were coming in, at least with this design, awful fast. And their mothership was flying away as they tried to slow down. But it all works out in the end. You know, what's space without some drama? Or something. Yeah, what's space without drama probably isn't the best uh, phrase to use for a NASA mission. But you know, I'm a I'm a YouTuber, not a PR guy. And now that we have successfully rendezvoused, it's just a matter of closing in. I'm going to try to do this on the day side so that it'll be easier for everybody to see. Using the, I guess, naturally put in boosters on the Apollo lander. Because I didn't even have to add anything for... There we go, we're home. Let's set everything to target. And 
commence the final docking maneuver. And three, two, one. Welcome home to the mothership. Just... Everyone get on board. Or actually, you know what, I'll transfer you to... to the lab for now. Because boy oh boy, do you have science to do. Then let's shut down this engine. And as well as shutting down the engine, to simulate a meteor impact, let's throw the, uh, let's throw the lander into the surface. Now, that's probably wa wasting just Delta V, because I'm not getting any... I'm not getting anything out of... ...throwing into the surface, but you know... ...gotta keep it clean for that space wildlife. And as well, we can just replace Lost Delta V by... ...draining out... ...everything with these new drain parts. Oh, we're already, we're already out of Delta V, that's amazing. So that brought us up to 3,000 Delta V. Oh look, there's our debris, our transfer stage. Is it, is it coming towards the planet or leaving it? I can't tell. Let's see, is it... I guess it's still leaving. It's impressive. It's been here this whole mission. And now, the part that the Kerbal's families have all been waiting for. Because, let's be real, their families probably miss them. It's time to go home. Let's get off, to quote Star Wars, I think, let's get off this rock. 201 days after a launch, or THE launch, from probably Cape Canaveral. Everything is ready. Just a couple more. <laughs> uh, eye-killing orbits. Holy shit. And here we are. Let's go home. Let's get off this rock. Goodbye, Mars slash Duna. Well, I'm not sure if we'll ever come back. But, you know, it's been fun. Had good times with the... Uh, science and exploration. Not sure why that arrow's freaking out like that, but... And... There we go. A perfect maneuver. This one is not so perfect at the moment. But, you know, it only takes about half of our Delta V to get in. Just some minor calculations. 
This would probably already be done on whatever computers they had. And a good periapsis. So, let's get to that maneuver. Goodbye, Mars. Can we see it out the window? Is that... I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's the thing. There we go, we can close the shield. Ah, oh, it's a shame. Oh, we're in the... this thing. I forgot about that. Yep. Goodbye. As we fly into the void, now only the sun will be our... our source of gravity. You know, at least we're back at Kerb in under a year. I think that could be manageable. Like, especially if there was telephone or satellite contact with the crew's families, they wouldn't go insane after 219 days in space. Although, regardless of insane or not, this is probably a welcome trip home. Like, this is probably low-key what they were looking forward to the whole time. But it's still another 76 days until they reach home with whatever little remnant of rocket they have left. Who knows, maybe we can even land at the Kerbal Space Center. That'd be a flex. Da, 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 da. Yeah, this takes a while. Three, two, one. Oh, we're on a collision course, that's not good. Well, we can fix that pretty quick. Just make it an arrow break. Yep, arrow break it is. <laughs> See, everyone's happy. Whole, whole crew is elated. We're guaranteed homebound. Just another two something months. Uh, crossfade to the arrow break. Home again, home again. You love to see it. Let's see, can we find... No, I guess we can't. We can't see it from the window. Eh, and I'm honestly too lazy to move into the window. But you know, we can just say they probably went to the window. Realistically, they would. I know I would just for a change of scenery. And now, we prepare to enter the atmosphere at incredibly fast speeds. These solar panels are expendable at this point. So we'll just leave them out. You know what, let's, uh, let's watch the fireworks show. <laughs> Wait. <sighs> I'm going to leave that in, because it shows that Oh boy, does this game take quick saves, because I nearly just 
burned up two Kerbals. But now, we're ready for our arrow break. Because the science lab, as important as it would be historically, it's just too heavy to save. So that would probably just burn up in the atmosphere, realistically. Is that a, No, that's a ship. And here we go. Oh yeah, we're definitely successfully arrow breaking, I feel like. Now granted, an arrow break isn't the most realistic, but... You know, it gets the job done. Because, sure, these multiple passes would expose us to more radiation, but... They would be much more efficient. Besides, the heat shows in this game are ludicrously OP. So they can handle whatever punishment these arrow breaks will make them take. Welcome home indeed, Kerbinauts. You have completed your mission. And we can just snap cut to the final pass. Well, yeah. it's over. The mission has ended. After 295 days and 20 hours, Apollo Mars is complete. Unfortunately, because we landed, you know, in the middle of the ocean, we can't put a flag on the landing site, but, you know, we can maybe grab a celebratory bo wa bleh, water bottle. And, you know, maybe just check the coordinates. Celebratory screenshot, whatever. Alright. If you guys like that, you know, leave a comment, leave a like, share the video. Really helps me. I can't even begin to describe how much. And I will see you all in the next video.